Huntington Beach, California. A pro surfing championship is upstaged as hundreds of rowdy teenagers turn this peaceful, sandy place into a dangerous, fiery hell. Cano winning the U.S. Open is a huge thing for him, you know, just being a part of that history as one of the winners and then having that deep connection to the area, I think it's huge. Also, it's a great thing for like all the other kids coming from California, being able to watch that. I mean, when I was young, that was all there was really for me, like when the U.S. Open came to town or there was a Stubbies event, an Oceanside event, but there's a few events in California where you would actually get to see pro surfers. Oh, these boards are just crazy. I mean, they're remakes, but they look so real. So yeah, this is the Red Beauty painted black. This is the board Curran won on in 83, 84, and 88. This is like, probably like 20 years before I was born. Growing up in Huntington, everyone knows about the OP Pro. It's like one of those iconic events and iconic moments in, in surfing. All the videos I see of him, he always weaves, like going to the inside, like on the, the honey, like the Huntington hop. Yeah. Dude, his ass turning, he never popped, dude. Yeah, him and He has pump. these ones where he's just going, yeah. <laughs> and then just load up. He's like bouncing off the chop. Yeah. So this is uh, Kelly's Never Give Up board from 94. They used to ride such long boards at Huntington. I can't ride anything over like a 5.10. You would see a lot more of the board over the wave. That was kind of the emphasis there, was, was to get that really pronounced look. I don't know, there's something about the drive and the look of these, like make your turns look bigger. So the rocker era is Slater got really into like making boards super rockered out. Like actually it was like 92. The boards were horrible. They were so bad. You couldn't go down the line because they had so much rocker. Both US Open finals I had with Kelly were controversial in different ways. The 94 one, I was winning basically throughout the final. Kelly needed a, like a really big score, like almost a 10. And he got this right and got like a little barrel and then did like a little air. And for the time, you know, the waves were really bad. So it was like, was that a 10 or not? And they didn't give it to him. He had nothing to lose and I wasn't gonna let him, you know, take another wave, <laughs> so. <laughs> Never give up, you know, with the, the crane trying to swallow the frog. <laughs> I, mean, I wonder where he got that. Idea. I don't know. It's just neat, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty epic. I mean, it just tells a story, you know? Yeah. Don't give up. And then this iconic board was the one from 96 when Beshin lost to Kelly with an interference in the beginning of the heat. Kelly ended up winning that one in the rematch. The interference in 96 was right off the bat. Like I honestly 
caught about two or maybe three waves before I even knew that I had gotten interference. And I was paddling into the right from the pier and he was paddling towards me from the south. It was basically, I was looking at you, you know, and I was right next to the right. And in my mind, there's no way that like anyone could get around me. And just the way the interference rules were back then, it was just really cut and dry. Like there's no room for uh, interpretation. Nowadays, they look at and really see like, did he ruin the way for him? You know, and today that probably wouldn't be an interference. Well, yeah, Shane had won a couple of events and uh, he was gonna surf the US Open and then he was going to France right after that. And so this was his favorite board and his girlfriend wrote me the letter. I don't know whether she brought the board up or not, she might have. Al, this is Shane's magic board he won his last two contests with, which were uh, G-Land and Japan. Shane would like a duplicate for the US Open and for the France contest. Uh, there's a phone number, if you have any questions, please call me at home. This is Andy's board that he did the giant iconic floater in 09 when it was huge. He won in actually 98 and 05. You don't remember it as much as the floater he did in 09 when it was maxing out HP. It's probably as big as it can ever handle. I remember that memory like, like it was yesterday. I had an ice cream in my hand. It was melting everywhere. It was going up my elbow, like down. And I was running down just because um, I want to see Andy surf. And he just does this huge floater and then it come to, and he comes down. And I didn't. I couldn't see him because I was I was like so far back. But I was like, oh my god, you hit the pier! And everyone on the pier screamed when you did that. And um, so I'm like, oh my god, Andy Iron just died on the pier. Like he, he hit the piling. Like there's no way. There's it was all like a oh, and then like cheers. So I was like, wow, he must have landed that. You see, this is a workup sheet I had, and the board was made for Julian Wilson, and. Uh, Somehow, and I don't know how, Andy got a hold of it. I, the boys at the, I, I thought the boys at the factory said he just came in and saw it and took it. You know, obviously I thought about winning before and all that stuff, but not in the way I won last year. It couldn't have been any better. 